Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I've got six cards to share with you that I've created using the My Monthly Hero Kit from April 2019. So I've started off here with card number one and the stamps and die set are always attached to a really beautiful photograph. So sometimes I will use both sides. This time I've decided only to use the front. So I've trimmed that down pretty wide here and then I'm just gonna keep taking you know, a sliver or so off of each edge until I'm happy with how my scene comes together. I really wanted to keep as much of that domed building off to the right hand side that I could, but I also didn't want to lose the buildings on the left as well. So I just kept trimming until I was finally happy with my scene and then of course took some off the top and the bottom as well. I've grabbed one of the plummy purple cardstocks that came in the kit, gone ahead and scored that down the center, and that will create my card base. So I wanted to add a sentiment here, but I didn't want it to stand out too much. So I decided to just place it down along the bottom. I'm gonna stamp out Grazi using some Versamark Onyx Black ink. And then because this is somewhat of a slick surface, I will then go ahead and add some Simon Says Stamp Fine Detail Clear Embossing Powder over the top, just to make sure that it gets um, nice and, and dry and I don't have to worry about anything smearing. I did get a little bit of some stick with my powder because I forgot to use my powder tool before I stamped, but thankfully this was clear powder. So even though I had a few little extra pieces around my sentiment, you won't notice it too much. So I've grabbed some of the foam tape that came in the kit. This is the thicker of the two rolls. Added that along the back here. I'm gonna peel away the backing and then I will place that down on the top of my card base. For the inside, I decided to use a sentiment from one of the more recent Simon Says Stamp card kits. Uh, this stamp set is called Amazing, and I'm going to stamp out your fantastic, amazing, and incredible for my inside panel. That is my usual Nina panel trimmed to 4x5 and a quarter. And then here I've trimmed off another quarter inch piece of that plum cardstock, added some score tape behind that, and then placed that along the bottom of my panel here. I went ahead and then trimmed off the excess. I'll add some ATG to the back of my panel and then place that on the inside of my card base. And that will complete card number one. So here for card number two, I'm going to use some of the die sets to create this really pretty Venetian scene. I've decided that I wanted the yellow to be my background, sort of uh, mimicking a sunset. And I wanted to add some water at the front, so I've trimmed out the waves using the lighter blue of the cardstock. And then I'm gluing that here on the more deep turquoise blue. I'm just going to trim around that so I have the blue behind the waves, um, but none sticking around on the outside. I did then go ahead and trim a little bit more off of the top. I decided that I wanted to have two of these wave sets here and I'm gonna leave the bottom one with the blue behind it and then the top one I'm going to go ahead and just trim out so that they fit together a little bit better. Um, but I'm gonna leave the yellow behind that so it looks sort of like the sun is shining on the water that's further back. I've added a layer of the thinner of the two foam tapes to the back of my bridge 
I'm gonna place that right down in the center there. I'm using my grid that I use on my Misty uh, just to make sure I have it nice and centered. I did glue my water pieces down using some art glitter glue. Now here I'm gonna use the thicker of the two foam tapes. I'm gonna place that all along the backside of the two buildings. And that's going to create some really pretty dimension for the scene. So I'll go ahead and peel away the backing and place that down off to the side. And then I will do the same thing uh, with the opposite side as well. So now that I had that done, I decided I wanted to add a sentiment, which was really silly of me. I should have added it before. So there you'll see I've lined everything up and stamped it out. And then there was some extra ink left on my stamp. Um, there was sort of a bubble um, and it stamped at the same time that the words did. So what I ended up doing was I didn't want to lose all of this work, but I also was not going to be able to use my sand eraser on this because it was just too dark of an ink color on too light of a cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and trim around this. I left this in just so you could see how I fixed it. Um, but I basically just went and trimmed around the buildings, making sure that I didn't have any yellow sticking out around them. I re-stamped it on another yellow panel and then once I have this trimmed out I'm going to add a little bit of art glitter glue behind my scene and I'll place that down on the new panel. And you would never know uh, unless I told you that it had that extra layer in between there. For my card base, I'm going to use some MFT's whipped cream cardstock. Here I'm stamping out the sentiment, thinking of you, and I put that directly on the inside. And then to place my panel down on the front, I am covering the entire front of the card base. So I'm going to add some art glitter glue, that way with the liquid glue I have a little bit more wiggle room so I can make sure I have that down uh, nice and straight on all of the edges. And that will complete card number two. For card number three, I'm gonna use that background city die. And I'm keeping this one pretty simple. I wanted to do a little bit of a uh, less dimensional card. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this out. This was from uh, MFT's Black Licorice cardstock. So I'm trimming that down, trying to get as straight of an edge as I can, and then I'll add some art glitter glue behind there. Uh, this, uh, for those of you who don't have the die sets or haven't played around with it yet, this actually cuts only the top portion. It does not cut the bottom line um, that you see as the bottom of the city there. So that way you can actually have it be as tall or as short as you decide that you want it to be. So I've trimmed mine down pretty close there. Uh, as you can see, I glued it on some of the lighter blue cardstock that also came in the kit. And then I've trimmed that down here to, uh, it's probably three, roughly three by four inches. I'm gonna stamp on that again with my Onyx Black ink, the sentiment wishing you the best. And then I've got a panel of this turquoise, which is trimmed to four by five and a quarter. 
I have popped up my smaller panel using some of the thinner foam tape. I'll peel with it backing and then I'm going to use my ruler to make sure I have that nice and centered on my turquoise panel. Then I'll add some ATG to the back of that and I'm going to place this down on a gray card base. And I pulled this from my stash. I'm not sure of the color, but if I can find it, I will link it for you below. I've kept the inside really simple as well. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp directly on that gray card base the sentiment, happy birthday. And that will complete card number three. So for card number four, I decided I wanted to create a card that looks like a postcard. So I'm going to create a little pocket here and this will make more sense as it goes along, but I'm starting out on the back side and I'm going to trim out just a little tab there using a one inch circle punch. And then on the back here, I'm going to create my postcard area. So I'm using my Misty Grid and my ruler to find the center of my card base. Then I'm going to use the pen that came in the kit to create the dividing line down the center. And then off to the side, I'm going to add three lines for the address. And then once I have those down, I'm going to grab that postage mark stamp as well as the sentiment, life is beautiful, and I'll add both those down and then stamp them out with my onyx black ink. So that's going to create the back of my postcard. So now I'm going to turn this into a pocket. So I'm going to add another card that will slide in there for more of a message if I, if I want to add that. And I'm adding some eighth inch score tape along either side here and then I will go ahead and peel away the backing and then fold that, fold that down on itself to create my pocket. So I decided to use a lot of the colors for this scene and this, this actually ended up being my favorite of the bunch. I've trimmed out a panel that is four and a quarter by five and a half from the light blue and then I've trimmed out the background city from the yellow and two of the bridges from the purple and you will see there, I gave you a quick look, I've attached two of the bridges together in the center there, just added a little bit of post-it tape behind the back to keep them uh, nice and lined up. And then I've taken that and placed it on top of the city. I wanted to keep that yellow going all the way across just to help me line everything up, but I needed to trim out the portion of that that was going to show through underneath when I placed the bridge down. I've also trimmed out the water twice from the dark turquoise color and then of course off to the side there you can see I've trimmed out the buildings from the red. So I wanted to keep the waves as continuous as I could with the water. I'm going to take the first one and glue that down the base edge I'm putting along the bottom of my panel. And then with the other water, I have done a little bit of trimming uh, to both of the top edges of these. Um, but I'm going to flip that the opposite direction so that I sort of have a continuation of those waves. And then I'll place the more hard edge or straight edge up towards the top and that's going to be covered by my city so you won't see it. Now I do have sort of a little <laughs> weird larger blue portion there but again that's going to be covered uh, when I place some of the other pieces down. 
So I've got my water and I place that down directly on top of my panel and I'm gonna place the city down directly on top as well, um, just using some art glitter glue. Just making sure I have everything lined up perfectly there. Once I have that down, I'm going to use some of that thinner foam tape and I'll place that along the back of my bridges. And I'll go ahead and place that down. And then I didn't want to see through my buildings that were in the front here. So I've grabbed some gray from my, uh, just from my stash, and I've added a little bit of our glitter glue behind each of the buildings. Then I'm going to go ahead and trim around those. And then I'm using the thicker of the two foam tapes. I'm going to add a strip of that along either end to place my houses down onto. And now I did actually end up peeling away a little bit at the top portion of that because the houses didn't end up going all the way up. So uh, if you were going to repeat this, I would just be careful. Um, it, I was able to get it off without anything tearing, but um, that foam tape is pretty sticky. So I wouldn't want to have I wouldn't have wanted to try and peel that back, you know, after a minute or so of it being stuck down in the cardstock. I'll go ahead then and peel away the backing and then place each of those down. I did add another little piece under those front sections on both sides of the building as well. I went ahead there and trimmed off that bottom portion that was sticking off the edge there. And then I wanted to finish that up. I hadn't used the gondola die yet. So I popped him up again using that thicker of the two pieces of foam tape and placed him down here. Then I'm going to grab just the pin from my art glitter glue and add a little bit underneath his head there to stick him down on top of the bridge so that he doesn't tear. And that's going to complete my front scene. Gonna add some art glitter glue to the top of my card base and go ahead and place that down. Then for the inside of my pocket, I use some of the leftover yellow cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my sentiment here, 
and then I will add just sort of three dots behind that using that same pen again. And then I wanted to add a little tab on the end so that it would be easier to pull out of that pocket. So I'm using some of the ribbon that the kit was tied up with and I've grabbed my tiny attacher. I'm gonna place that along the edge and staple that down. And then I can go ahead and slide that into my card base. It was a little tight um, and the size is going to depend on how closely you place your score tape to the edge of the card base. So I just went ahead and trimmed just a sliver off of that and then it was much easier to slide in and out. And that will complete card number four. So for these first four cards, I used just what was included in the regular main kit. I did buy a few of the add-on pieces, so I'm gonna be working with those two for the next, or these last two cards. Uh, so this is the arch tree die and I've gone ahead and trimmed this out for the green I used MFT's gumdrop green and for the branches I've used paper tray ink cocoa bean. So I'm going through here on the green portion and trimming off the tree trunk sort of giving that a nice curve to make it look as natural as I can and then I'll also go in and pull out the sort of obvious branch pieces as well. This was a little finicky, but it really didn't take too long. Okay, so now that I have that part trimmed out, I'm gonna layer that on top of the brown die cut. I'll add some art glitter glue to the back here. Just in lots of little tiny dots. I don't want it to squeeze through uh, any of the openings. So I'll go ahead and place that down and then slide it around a little to make sure all my branches are in the right place. And then I've got another panel um, of that lighter blue that came in the card kit. I've again trimmed that down to four and a quarter by five and a half. The uh, size of a, the full front of my card base. Uh, I have gone ahead and stamped out the sentiment here, happy retirement. And then I also grabbed a Nina panel for the inside and I'm stamping out wishing you the best. I've added a bunch of little pieces of some eighth inch foam tape. This is a uh, scotch foam tape. So I'll peel away the backing there and then I'm going to line that up with the top of my card or my panel for my card base. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and add some ATG to my inside panel and I'll place that here on the inside of my card base. Uh, this is also made from MFT's Gumdrop Green. And then I'll add some art glitter glue to the top of my card base and add my panel down there. And that will complete card number five. For card number six, I'm using this Venetian Neighborhood Cling Stamp. And I'm going to stamp that out using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I'm on some Fabriano Hot Press 110 pound watercolor paper. I'm going to use my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And next I'm going to add my watercolor. So I'm using my trusty Gansey Tanby watercolor set and my Santa Fe brushes. Uh, at this point I'm going to go ahead and turn up the music and let you enjoy the watercolor process. I have sped this up quite a bit but if you want to skip ahead to me finishing the card you'll want to go to around the 34 minute mark. Thank you. 
So once I was finished with the watercolor, I thought it would be really nice to add a sentiment on top, but I didn't want to place it directly on the watercolor panel. So I decided I would float it using some of the vellum from the card kit. I have not, hadn't used that in any of the previous cards yet. So um, I've trimmed that down here and I wasn't sure quite how much I wanted around either edge, but I ended up going with about a half an inch. So you will see me trim this down again. Um, in a little bit here, but I have gone ahead and scored a half an inch. I'm going to fold that around my panel and then I'll place the panel down and score that again along the side here. So that way I can stamp on top of the vellum um, and it just gives a really pretty soft subtle look to the front of the card. So stamping on that vellum, I'm going to use the sentiment, uh, Life is Beautiful. And I am using my Versafine Onyx Black ink. I did go ahead and hit that vellum with my powder tool. And then I will, I'm stamping this out a couple times because again, this is a slick surface. So I want to make sure I get a nice solid image with my sentiment. And then I will again add some of my Simon Says Stamp uh, Fine Detail Clear Embossing Powder. Now, when I go ahead to emboss this, I'm letting my heat gun heat up really well before I go anywhere near this vellum because vellum will warp. So you saw how quickly there, um, this is sped up two times, but you can tell how quickly I was moving just until that was melted so that I didn't get too much of any warping on my vellum. Uh, here, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out the inside panel as well. And I went with the sentiment thinking of you. So I've grabbed my quarter inch score tape. I'm gonna place that on either side of my panel. And then I will go ahead, make sure that that's down nice and tight, but I'll go ahead then and peel away the backing. I'm gonna place the vellum overlay down one side at a time. So I'm just making sure everything's lined up nice and neat. And then I'll peel away that backing and fold that down. And then I'll do the same thing with the other side. So it wasn't quite exactly even. I had maybe about, I don't know, a 16th of an inch hanging off the bottom edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim both edges down slightly. It'll still fit my card base. I'm gonna add some art glitter glue to the top of this card base. And this is made from the tan, I'm not sure if it was Nina cardstock or not. It's very similar to Desert Storm. Um, but that was included in the card kit. And I'll go ahead and place that front panel down. And then since I had my art glitter glue out, I added a little of that to the inside panel and I'll place that down here as well. And that will complete card number six. Here are a few close-ups of the finished cards. In the description box below, you'll find my blog post, which has additional photos and links to the supplies I used. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.